Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We gotta talk about that crazy SBC. I would venture to say it was the most unexpected SBC yet this year inside of FIFA 22 Ultimate Team with that year in review player pick SBC. We didn't have a ton of leaks talking about it. We didn't really know that it was coming and it surprised us all yesterday and it's really an interesting SBC. So we're going to talk about that, how that impacted the market, because it really did impact the market a lot. It's an SBC that so many people went out and did just because of how different, how we've never really seen anything like that before in FIFA, because it gave you a chance to pack SBC cards that were only available through SBCs early this year. It gave you a chance to pack those cards once again, which was crazy. So a lot of people went out and did that. Of course, you saw when we loaded in, we have a new Future Stars loading screen showing us the card design and of course telling us that the promo is going to be Friday. That's an early loading screen on a Tuesday. Very, very early loading screen. So I want to take a look at all that. And of course, we're heading into another milestone rewards time frame where a lot of you guys, well, everybody who's played Division Rivals at least, is going to be getting milestone rewards. Now, I haven't played that many games. I'm barely over 20 games. I've played 26 in this past season. So I have not played a lot of rivals, but a lot of people, of course, are going to be getting um, milestones rewards alongside of division rivals rewards. And that's got a lot of people talking about team of the years and team of the year honorable mentions. When will be a good time to buy these players if you have not purchased them yet? Because a lot of them keep going up in price. Will there be some drops with this rewards period or maybe today on Wednesday? I want to talk through all of that in today's video. So if you're enjoying the videos on the channel, of course, make sure to hit a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. First things first, Let's talk about this team of the year counter really fast. We are up to number two. Just to give you a quick update before we get into everything today, we did hit the jackpot yesterday with a 96 rated N'Golo Conte. I still have a lot of big boy packs left, but we hit a Conte yesterday, so that's why that number is up to two. Very excited about that. I'm just so stoked I had to share it. So let's move on though and talk about this SBC because this is what really everybody's talking about in this game right now. Year in review player pick 93,000 coins, which honestly I think is not a bad value, right? It's like an 85 rated squad and 93,000 coins is the price, but almost 90% upvote. And again, I think this has such a really good response because it's not that expensive, especially with people having fodder in their clubs from crafting SPCs and so many upgrade packs that are out right now. And just the fact that it's something new we've never seen before, right? And it's a gamble SBC. So those three things combined really make this an SBC that a lot of people wanted to go out and do yesterday. Now, we really didn't know that this was coming, right? It was a legit surprise. And that was also part of why this SBC was really, really dope. The only really like look into this that we had was, you know, EA put like a message out and they, they said they were going to be releasing some new types of SBCs, like the team of the year trial SBC that they had released prior that didn't end up working out, that was like repeatable a certain number of times or repeatable a certain number of times in a time period, you know, like some crazy stuff like that. And there was some leaked tweets about, you know, re-releasing some SBCs. So there was some there were some kind of like subliminal messaging tweets out there and some leaks about an SBC like this, but nobody really expected this to happen right and that's why i think it moved the market as much as it as it did it's just it's brand new it's so cool that everybody had to go and try it out and i think that this we're going to see more sbcs like this i don't know if this was really like a trial from ea sports because this sbc is still out for another couple days a day 14 hours i think we're going to see something like this again i don't know if it's going to be the exact same player pick released maybe like later on this week as one last coin drain before future stars or, you know, other stuff like this. We've never really seen a re-release of SBC cards ever, except for re-release for SBC cards that were out earlier in the year, like in July at the end of the game. But like through a pack, it was kind of cool, right? Now, some of you guys are like, man, I had a chance to do these SBCs and now I get another chance. If I knew this was coming, maybe I would have waited. Yeah, but we've never seen this before, right? But I think EA is going to know that everybody loved this SBC from yesterday as a gamble pack and the content that it brought and the content that, you know, people are packing player of the month, Cristiano Ronaldo from this SBC, right? It was just plain cool. I'm a big fan of it. GG's EA. It was cool, new, refreshing, and exciting 
content. So I have no problem with it. But that's how everybody saw this SBC on the game yesterday too. Now I did it and I got Sebastian Holler team of the group stage, right? So definitely an L. But you know, there were so many people yesterday that were packing. You got guys like Player of the Month, Cristiano Ronaldo, or Coutinho, Winter Wild Cards. What were some other ones that I saw? Vinny Jr., Player of the Month. Uh, Zaha, Winter Wild Cards. Jabril Sow. There were so many great Winter Wild Card SBCs that were, you know, out that so many people packed those. Player of the Months like Fofana were packed a lot. Alfonso Davies I saw people get. So it was just a W in that, right? Well, since it was such a W SBC and everybody loved it, fodder is booming, right? Fodder is booming to like extinct levels. If you take a look at a lot of these cards, Oyarza Ball is literally max price. 13,000 coins for 85. So 86 is then when the 85 started to go extinct. 86 has started to inch up in price. They are all now about 20k a piece. And even your cards like 88, Lukaku's 35,000 coins after being, I think he was like 32k yesterday. He was 30,000 coins, jumped to 39k, and is now kind of gone back down a little bit into, you know, into this Wednesday morning time frame that we're at right now after the peak of, of buying. But this, the fodder just absolutely exploded with this type of SBC. 84 is 4,000 coins a piece. Just that middle tier. Some of your higher tier fodder went up more as well, though, because with 85s going extinct, some people are probably, you know, buying an 88 or an 89 to get this SBC done. That made those cards, like we just looked at with Lukaku, go up in price as well. So a lot of coins were drained off the market because of this SBC. So once again, when we usually see stuff like this dropped, what do we see? the meta market and popular cards get sold off a little bit. And that happened across the market in multiple areas yesterday. Gold Conte, 200,000 coins down to 176. This guy's not even in packs right now, right? His team of the year is in packs. 200,000 coins dropped down to 176. You know, he's rebounded back basically to 190. This is an undercut right here. But this happened for a lot of honorable mention cards as well, right? I actually bought uh, a couple... Uh, where's he at? A couple Koundes. I bought some Koundes in the 230s because he went from 250 down to 230. French center back. I was like, this guy's going to bounce back, right? So I bought a couple in the 230 range. He bounced back to 250. 257 is actually where I sold him at. Now, some cards haven't bounced back yet. Like Chiesa went from, you know, 300K. I actually sold five Chiesas at 300,000 coins yesterday before the SBC dropped. And he dropped down to like 260s. And he's, he's taking a little bit longer to bounce back, but you know, 295, 300K down to 270, I think his lowest is like 260 something. And now he's, he's kind of back up to 280. So he's rising back up a little bit and getting rare. Um, and we're going to talk about these cards again in a little bit, because I think there's an investment opportunity here because I think there might be a little bit of panic today, but I ultimately don't think that these cards are going to drop too much on the market with milestone rewards and division rivals. So we'll talk about that in a bit, but some of these cards did get panic sold yesterday. And along with this year in review player pick, there was one other objective that was released that also caused some market movement, but this objective is a W in itself as well. A year in review objective where basically this is where your um, swaps token for future stars was released yesterday as well. As you can see in here, you have to play 10 matches of rivals or squad battles. And then you have these other increments, right? Play 10, play 25 to get a rule breakers player pack a signature signings player pack, 50 games, and then 75 games for a winter wild cards player. Basically, if you grind some rivals, if you, you know, maybe grind some squad battles over the next, you have 28 days to do this. So almost over the next month, throughout the month of February, basically is when this is going to be going on. In this month, if you can play 75 games, uh, which if you're playing rivals every week, if you throw in a few squad battles games in there for objectives or whatever, you're probably going to get this done not too hard it's not going to take that much of a grind to be completely honest for most people uh you're going to get these nice packs right and we saw these packs added to the code about a week ago i think and we were wondering where they were going to be well here's our answer right guaranteed signature signings guaranteed winter wild card guaranteed rule breaker so people are going to start opening these up as the days continue to go on as people that are really grinding the game trying to get these packs these are cool right and when people saw this yesterday some of the wild cards dropped in price and th there were great opportunities to buy into some of those like really if you think about it why would somebody be panic selling a card um, because there's a pack release that might supply that card untradeable but nobody can attain that pack today right nobody's playing 75 matches of fifa 
in the next 24 hours. That's like literally impossible, pretty much. I think if you did the math, it's literally impossible to play that many games of FIFA. So, you know, you saw some panic on cards like, let's see, what was one? Collins. Collins went from like 60K down to 49 or 47,000 coins, I believe. And he bounced back up. Yeah, he was 60K down in the 40s. It doesn't show it, but he was in the 40s, back up to about 55, 56K. Uh, Al Sandrini was down, Sterling was down, Ganduzi was down, and some of these cards have only slightly bounced back, but some of these cards have fully bounced back. Spinout was like 180, I think. He he rebounded back up nicely. Tonzebe is still kind of low, but you know a lot of the panic selling that happened yesterday, overall, like as we look at this Conte card, as we looked at some of the Team of the Year honorable mentions as well, a lot of these cards have bounced back from where that panic was, because the panic was really just people that were selling these cards to go and do this SBC, right? All the hype yesterday on the game was to this SBC. That's why you saw the market movements that we did, right? So that's kind of what's going on with that. Again, fodder is up. Now there was one issue yesterday with this SBC, right? And since it's brand new, I guess EA always has a few bugs with brand new stuff, but a year in review SBC incorrectly contained record breaker Edward as a potential player pick SBC because uh, evidently, and I didn't even know this, Edward's SBC was um, released after December 31st, which for the year in review SBC, it was all the content before basically the new year. So December 31st and backwards towards the start of FIFA 22, those were the SBCs that were available and Edward was released in January. So EA messed up and they said players who had Edward show up as one of their options will receive a replacement player pick with the correct player item pool in the coming days. Now, we did some share plays on screen, and we actually saw a few Edwards. So just be kind of careful with that. I don't think that's going to impact the market a lot. But there's going to be some people that will be getting, um, um, what would they call this, compensation, right? Compensation for the player pick that happened yesterday. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you saw an Edward in your player pick or if you picked him, you're going to get another one. Because even though that was a decent card, it was technically not released according to the lines of what that SBC should have been. So that was everything that happened yesterday with the year in review SBC. Again, big W, right? I know you guys may have some different opinions, but I just think, especially for a gamble pack, right? That was fun. That was new. It was fresh. I liked the content. GG's EA Sports, good stuff. Now let's move on to some other things, right? Future Stars loading screen. That's the car design. We kind of already had seen it in game um, from the little mini car design that they showed us on the Future Stars swaps menu with Gallagher and Frimpong already shown there. So all I can think about with this car design is that there's so many colors. And I'm interested to see how the the players look with this like with dynamic images and stuff i'm really it, there's just so many colors going on here right i'm just kind of it's kind of all over the place i know some people think this is ugly some people think it's fire let me know what you think down in the comments because i'm kind of in between it looks i'm interested to see how it looks with players on it that's kind of how i'll say uh about that now along with future stars ea started promoing like they did last year this like talent scout thing they said, we're going to send out a talent scout to identify a player for one of our upcoming SBCs to kick things off. Which player nationality should our scout focus on their search on? Well, this happened last year, and I think the player that wins this search um, you know, or wins this vote, I think the SBC is going to either be on Saturday or Sunday. I don't think this is going to be for the Friday SBC, but I think it'll be on Saturday or Sunday. If you guys remember, I believe... Um, it was either last year or two years ago, we had like a, an English striker that was released after they tweeted this out. So I'm going to go ahead and vote Brazil. Yeah, Brazil was 60%. So that's kind of interesting. I guess it doesn't say like what position it would be. So it's only going to be a Brazilian, but we don't know what position it's going to be. So uh, that's interesting. But we're going to have a Brazilian most likely, as you can see here, 88,000 votes, 60% Brazil. I'm not that surprised, to be honest. But that's out there if you want to go ahead and uh, vote on that. Now, let's talk about this market a little bit more as well. As I have been mentioning some of the team of the year honorable mentions and just with the market in general, the market is still really high, right? Like I still have the Rudigers that I bought at 500,000 coins, the Hollands that I bought at, uh, you know, 470,000 coins, the Donnarumma's that I bought in the low 200s. I still have a lot of these cards that I invested in. You can see Donnarumma 207. 203. Now, Don Ruma's back down again. He's kind of just, um, you know, there's a little bit of an anomaly here with Don Ruma because there is a leak that David De Gea has won the Premier League Player of the Month. 
So that means that David De Gea is going to be getting a POT MSBC this Friday. Oh, Dunroom was back to 230. So he was down to like 210, 215, and that was an opportunity to buy more to be honest. Now he's back up as he should be. But for a lot of you guys that want to buy what maybe it's Donnarumma, maybe it's Hakimi, maybe it's Cancelo, or maybe it's an honorable mention card for your team. You keep watching these prices and they keep just going up. Cancelo is 850, right? 850K. He's up so much from where he was. Same thing with the honorable mentions. They literally just keep rising, right? Like if we look at the Rudiger card that a lot of you guys might be wanting to get for your teams, you're looking for a buy window and you're just like, Nate, this stuff, this stuff just keeps going higher. And apart from yesterday, the content in the past two, three days has been definitely slower, which is why I think you're seeing these prices continue to rise up. Um, now, again, what really you're going to have to watch out for, for buying or investing in any of these team of the year cards for your team, it's really going to come down to how much panic selling there is today on Wednesday. If people really think that Milestone Rewards is going to supply these cards a lot, then they're going to sell a little bit, right? But I'm here to tell you that based off the past two times we have seen Milestone Rewards with promo cards that are in packs at that time in this game, there's, there's not going to be that much panic. There's not going to be that much supply. And, you know, especially after the milestone rewards are given out, yeah, some people are going to pack team of the years, right? You're going to see people pack some of these honorable mentions. Some of the team of the year cards are going to get packed. And, you know, some of them might have a tiny bit of supply on the market on Thursday. But again, with the amount of coins that are on this game right now, the, the cards that I would really only expect to be affected that much would be the lower tier ones, right? Like, David Alaba, 50,000 coins is actually the cheapest that he's been, unless this is a flipping undercut. It says he's 50K. Yeah, he's like 51, 52K, right? He was 57, 58,000 coins holding before the SBC yesterday. The, the lower tier ones like this, I might expect to be dropped in price maybe a little bit. But if you're wanting to buy maybe a Muhammad Salah or a Holland or, you know, any of the really meta cards that are either an honorable mention or a legit team of the year, I really don't see these cards dropping that much unless there's panic selling today. And after rewards come out tomorrow on Thursday, I think you're really just going to see the market pick up, right? Because so many people are going to get some coins from that or extra coins maybe or extra fodder from the um, milestone packs, which aren't tradable, by the way. They're untradable. And that's why I really think that the market's not going to be impacted that much by those packs is because all those packs are untradable. Foden's 500k. Wow, 495. So he's getting rare and going up as well. So that's kind of where I'm lying and where I'm and where I'm sitting um, in my stance with where I think the market's going to go after tomorrow. I just think unless EA drops something insane content-wise, this stuff is probably just going to keep moving upwards because as of right now, um, I don't think these. We we've seen this twice now already this year. The first time there was panic selling before milestone rewards because everybody was like, "OMG, people are going to be getting 100k packs. People are going to be getting like two 100k packs, depending on what division you're in and how many games you've played." Yeah, people are going to be getting some really good packs, but in all reality, they're just going to go out and complete more SBCs because you're just going to get fodder and maybe some team of the years will be packed, but it's going to be mostly untradeable. So. I think it's going to be people get coins from division rivals rewards from taking option two and option three, which gives out a decent amount of coins. And you're actually going to see the market, especially on these honorable mentions, probably go up unless EA drops some pretty crazy content that we're not expecting. So that's kind of how I see this market. So if you're looking to buy one of these for your team, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place and like, all right, do I bite the bullet and buy Goretzka? who's already up. He's 440,000 coins. Do I buy this card up? He was 400K on the weekend. Do I buy him here? Or do I roll the dice that, you know, maybe today he drops down to like the 420 or the 430 range with a bit of a drop off? Or do I wait till the weekend when a card like Jude Bellingham comes out and maybe the future stars are super duper supplied and they're super cheap? Uh, you know, that's the unknown. Will these team of the years and the honorable mentions rise after team of the year is the big question. It just depends on the content that EA released. It's really hard to answer that question, but with how juiced and how well these cards link to a lot of people's teams right now, I would really imagine that they would maintain their prices pretty well and if not uh, rise after team of the year, but it really only depends on the future stars content and how people get excited for that with the swaps tokens that are out. It's going to depend on the SBC's objectives and you know, honestly, the stats of the cards that are dropped in packs and how easy they are to pack. So 
that's really what's going to determine whether these cards go up or not in price. But what I'm going to tell you is if you have coins and you want to buy one of these for your team, do it. Do it. If there's panic selling today, have fun. Buy a card. Put it in your squad. Go out. Play the weekend league and have fun, right? Do what is going to make you have the most fun on this game. If you lose a little bit of coins, it is what it is. We'll be here and we'll be trading on the market to make things up. Now, I would have bought a lot more cards yesterday with this little bit of a market dip. I only bought two Kundes and a Jonathan David. I would have bought a lot more stuff if I wasn't hammering the packs, but we opened well over 100 packs yesterday. We still have a lot of stuff to go and I'm still going to put more coins into premium upgrade packs because these have been really good for crafting, right? I did the mid prime SBC yesterday. If you guys want to watch me do all this, I do it live on stream, twitch.tv slash the foot accountant. That link is down below. Still have an 82 times 25 and 85 times three defenders at attackers, the times 11 packs. Um, I still have some 50 Ks ultimate packs. Oh, I've got some tradable big boys back here. Okay. Yeah, so we got some more big packs to open up tomorrow and hopefully pack some more team of the years. But that's kind of been my focus this week. So I have not been trading as much on the market, but I feel like the market besides yesterday has honestly been just a slow rising market throughout this entire week. So that's why I think that people there's still a decent amount of people still waiting to go and buy some cards for teams um, and you know, waiting to see this milestone rewards Thursday kind of play things out. And then from there, I think is when you'll actually start to see a decent pickup from the market and then kind of stuff getting rare again into the weekend, depending on the content that EA released. So that's kind of my thoughts on the market right now in general at the moment. It's an absolutely incredible time to open packs, right? Like me having these tradable uh, packs saved up right here, I'm, I'm licking my chops, bro, because if I pack an 86 rated card, that's 20,000 coins when usually 86s are like 12 or 11K or do make sure you're doing your preview packs, right? Because preview packs right now, which I actually don't even have mine, preview packs right now are incredible value. If you get a walkout or even like an 84 or an 85, it's selling for buku money. And I think that the fodder right now is definitely a sell. Fodder is definitely a sell. Get it out while prices are really high because there's gonna be more packs open, a lot more lightning rounds coming this weekend on future stars so that's kind of my take on the game ggs to ea for the cool content right we have a lot of swap and like grindable content that is out right now of course with the games ea is like everybody that's drained their coins after team of the year ea is being really smart with this they're throwing out some gameplay objective future star swaps they're putting those in here honorable mention getting you a uh, luke shaw card moments of verde that's been out all the loan cards they're trying to push you towards gameplay objectives and just put out a ton of content in general to keep people interested in this game after team of the year which is a really really high time so that's why i think you're seeing some really good content too like with the sbc from yesterday with that year in review that's just kind of what ea is doing i'm curious to see what happens today on wednesday we're getting a team of the week. The only thing that I know about today's team of the week is that Sadio Mane is in. Sadio Mane is in this week's team of the week. Um, other than that, the team of the week is supposedly uh, not too good. One last thing I will mention is there's a very, very small chance, but a slight chance that EA would run lightning rounds today. Uh, they have not run any lightning rounds over the past two days. They've run these like premium gold players plus packs, but Wednesday's in the past for a new team of the week. Uh, they have run lightning rounds before and also EA released their last quarter earnings. I just saw a little snippet of this on Twitter a little bit ago. Uh, and EA as a company did not hit their projected earnings for the last quarter. So I don't know if we'll see any impact directly on that in FIFA, but, uh, they spammed a lot of lightning rounds during the team of the year time frame. I think they're going to spam a lot of lightning rounds again during future stars because they're putting some big names in the team as we looked at the league players in yesterday's video. So I could maybe a very small chance to see lightning rounds today. And that would maybe drop some of those honorable mention cards, some of those team of the years, and that could create a buy window if we see that. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as well. We'll adjust on the fly if we see that. So I know I talked a lot. I know this video is getting kind of long, but if you did enjoy this video, smack the thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe if you are new, but it's full bore opening packs mode for me right now. Of course, the market is just kind of moving towards the end of this week. We're just kind of waiting for future stars. People are opening packs, doing SBCs, and EA spicing it up with these year in review stuff. So I'm down for more of this EA Sports. Give us some more cool stuff. Team of the Year has been a W so far and lead us in with a W to future stars. That's all I'm asking. All right, boys, it's been Nate Foot Accountant. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.